One of the first things you need to learn when learning Korean is Hangul. And as you start learning all the different consonants and vowel letters, you also need to learn how Korean syllables are formed, as only then can you really read Hangul. So in this video, we're going to learn about how Korean syllables are formed and learn some of the ways in which the final consonant, also called Pachim, is read. As you may know already, Hangul is made up of 19 consonants. There are 14 basic consonants and 5 double consonants, also sometimes called tense consonants. Then there are 21 vowel letters, and of these, there are 8 basic vowels, and 6 of them have what we call a Y-glide variety. And this is basically these basic vowels with an extra Y sound. And this Y sound is indicated by an extra dash in the Y-glide vowel letter. Then the rest are what we call double vowels, and these are called double vowels because effectively they are formed by combining the other vowels together. Okay, so that was a really quick overview of the consonants and vowels in Hangul. Let's now look at how we combine these consonants and vowels and form syllables. Now the basic construct of a Korean syllable is a consonant-vowel combination, a CV combination. So we take one consonant, one vowel, we put them together and we form syllables. Now that seems pretty easy to understand because after all, in English, we also have consonant vowel combinations. But the key difference between Korean syllables and English syllables is that while English syllables can begin with a vowel letter, Korean syllables cannot. They must always begin with a consonant letter. Now this word, sa, means number four, and it's made up of the consonant letter shio and the vowel letter a. So together they form sa, sa. Now some vowels, like this one, are vertical, so they are always positioned next to the consonant that they form syllables with. However, there are also horizontal vowels, and these horizontal vowels are always positioned below the consonant letter. For example, this word so, which means cow, is made up of the consonant letter shiot, again, and the vowel letter o, which is horizontal, so therefore this vowel letter is positioned below the consonant. Lastly, we also have the double vowels, and because these double vowels are made up of a vertical vowel and a horizontal vowel, each part of the vowel is positioned where they normally would be. So the vertical vowel part is positioned next to the consonant, and the horizontal vowel part is positioned below the consonant. So that's the basic structure of a Korean syllable, but remember that Korean syllables can also have consonant-vowel-consonant combination, a CVC combination. Here's an example. 팔, 팔. Now this word 팔 means 8, and it's made up of the consonant letter p, the vowel letter a, and the final consonant liul. Now this liul is the final consonant in this syllable, and in Korean, the final consonant in a syllable is called 받침. 받침 literally means support, and it's always positioned beneath the initial CV combination. And in this example, you can see how this 받침 literally supports the CV combination above. Now, in Korean, you can't have consonant clusters at the beginning of a word. And a consonant cluster is when you have many consonants grouped together. But you can have two consonants working as a pachim, a CVCC combination. Now, the double consonant in Korean is called kyopbachim, and it roughly translates to layered support. Here's an example. 일다, 일다. Now, 일다 means to read. And you may have noticed already, but when we have 겹받침, we read one 받침, but the other remains silent. So here we read 리을, but we don't read 기어. So it's 일다, 일다. Now in 겹받침, we normally read the first 받침, and the second one remains silent. However, there are always exceptions. For example, the Korean word for chicken is 닭, and here the 겹받침 is same as the verb we saw earlier, which is 일다. However, this time, rather than reading the first pachim, we read the second pachim, and the first pachim, the lil, remains silent. So we read it as tak, tak. Now, when learning to read kyo pachim, I think the important thing is not to learn some pattern in one word and try to apply that pattern in other words, but try to learn words with kyo pachim. And since there aren't that many words with kyo pachim, it shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, so that's syllable formation covered. Now let's look at some of the ways in which pachim is read. Now, some pachim is really easy to read because after all, the concept of consonant-vowel-consonant combination exists in English too. 
For example, the word man, which means 10,000, is made up of miam, the vowel letter a, and the final consonant nian, which is similar to n in English. So this word is read man, man. However, while some pachim are read in the same way as English, others are read very differently. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the different ways in which pachim is read. First, let's look at some pachim which are read differently to the way they normally sound. Here's an example. Ip, ip. Ip means mouth and it's made up of the consonant ian, the vowel letter e, and the final consonant piup. Now, because piup is similar to the b sound, we might think that this is read ib, ib, so that piup sounds more like b. However, this is actually read ip, ip. So piup sounds like piup, which is similar to the p sound. And this is all the more peculiar because in Korean, there is this word ip, which means leaf. And this is spelt with piup as pachim. So this word, which means mouth, and this word, which means leaf, they are spelt differently, but they're read in the same way. Ip, ip. Now, this change in sound in reading pachim is especially common when the pachim is shiot, chiot, tigot, and chiot. For example, this is read kot, Kot and not kos. And this is read chatta, chatta, not chajda. And this is read tutta, tutta, not tutta. And finally, this is read got, got, and not gotch. Another common aspect of reading pachim is the linking sound when the following syllable begins with an eon. Consider these words. Hanguga, hanguga. 앉아요, 앉아요, 필요, 필요. In each word, when there is a syllable with a pachim and the following word begins with an iung, the pachim sound carries over to the next syllable. And in the second word, we have 겹받침. And the silent consonant in the 겹받침 is carried over to the following syllable. So it's read 앉아요, 앉아요. The third way of reading pachim is the hiot pachim. In general, hiot is a silent pachim. So in this word, choa, choa, hiot is a silent pachim because it's not read in any way. However, if the following syllable begins with a different consonant, hiot can affect the way that syllable is read. Here are some examples. 좋다, 좋다, 좋지, 좋지. 좋겠다, 좋겠다. Now, when the following syllable begins with 디귿, 지읒, 기역, or 비읍, hiot combines with these consonants to produce an aspirated consonant sound. An aspirated consonant sound is a consonant sound produced with an extra puff of air. What this means is that when you produce an unaspirated sound, like 다, 다, you should feel very little air coming out of your mouth. 다, Ta. On the other hand, if you produce an aspirated sound like ta, ta, you should feel an extra puff of air coming out of your mouth. Ta, ta. But this production of an aspirated sound can also happen when the pachim is tigut, chiut, kiyak, or piup, and the following syllable begins with hiut. Here's an example word. Ipak, ipak. Ipak means to start school. And here, the pachim piup combines with the hiut in the following syllable to produce an aspirated sound, which is piup. The final aspect of reading pachim is the reading of formal verb endings. Now, formal verb endings always have piup as pachim, and the way they're read can confuse many Korean learners. Here are some examples of formal verb endings. 입니다, 입니다, 합니다, 합니다. 씁니다, 씁니다. Now, although these verb endings begin with a syllable that has a piupachim, the piupachim is read as miyum. So it's not itnida as it was for ip, which we learned earlier, but it's imnida, imnida. There's no real reason for this other than to make pronunciation easier because saying imnida is a lot easier than ipnida. Okay, so I hope now you have a fairly good understanding of how Korean syllables are formed and how pachim is read in Korean. 
Thanks for joining us and I look forward to seeing you soon again. Bye-bye.